Hey Greens, so let's just be very, very, very clear. I am not a sculptor. I do sculpt. But the first time I ever sculpted was genuinely when I started my YouTube channel. So I know, I am very well aware, I have a lot of work to do on myself. So show me your sculpture before you critique my sculpture. <laughs> We're gonna do some fighting! In all seriousness, I am looking at my sculptures a few months later, and for me, it gives me an opportunity to look at what I've created, where I was once very proud of it. Like this little guy. I'm just joking. This thing over here. This goes in the trash. So throughout all these years, I've made so many different sculptures out of polymer clay. Some I absolutely love, others I hated. And so I figured since the teacher in me needs to give some grades, I might as well critique and grade my own sculptures. Don't think of it as a way of putting myself down. This is a perfect opportunity for me to see where I'm slacking off and how I can get better based on that. And oh, there's so much to work on, dang <laughs> The first sculpture we're going to look at is one of my oldest ones on my desk. And I have to admit, for this being one of the first ever sculptures I've ever made, I think it must have been maybe my second year of Christmas videos, I, I really don't remember. I'm really happy with the way that I textured the gingerbread castle, because it really does look like it's textured, it looks like cookies. So you can tell that this was a dessert-themed castle. And I have to admit, that little path of those M&Ms took me for ever. Forever! The Goombas themselves are actually really cute. There's a big one on the on the right side, and then there's a tiny one on top. The whole candy cane thing, honestly, this sculpture is probably the best one. That's why I started with it, because I know it, it's gonna go downhill from here. We're just gonna... Overall, I think one of the things that I really dislike the most on this sculpture is that my shading could have been better. And there was a spot where I really misshaded, and I guess I thought it would go away after baking, but Jackie, you were wrong. It only got darker, and it stayed. Sometimes I overestimate what you could do. I would probably rank this piece a 7.5 on 10. There's a lot going on, I really love the icing, but a lot of parts of the icing were a little translucent, so they could have been darker. I should have added one drop of acrylic paint. This next sculpture, I was oh so happy with it. At the time. And it was a collab with Sakura Dragon because she makes the most amazing watercolor pieces. And so I was inspired to recreate this. And for some reason, I thought I did it justice, but looking back at it, it's pretty mediocre. I mean, when you look at it from far, it looks good. But when you look a little closer, what's up with those four leaf clovers behind the dragon? It obviously looks rushed. The edges are just so bad. And I'm pretty sure if I touch it, it's most likely going to break because it's a really thin piece. One of the things I am pretty proud of is that little bubble. I know, I got so many comments where people were like, But Jakey, you forgot the mouth. No! Have you ever heard of Chibi? Chibi sometimes doesn't have mouth. They do have mouth, it just doesn't, you just don't have to show it. The other thing I'm really annoyed, like really annoyed with is, what was I thinking when I made those flowers? I obviously have problem making foliage. I can't, because those flowers look really diseased. So badly done, so badly shaded. The leaves don't look organic, it looks stiff. I think I now know that I really do need to see other people make foliage out of clay, because I can't do it, obviously. <laughs> One of the only things that saves this piece is the cuteness of the dragon on the mushrooms and the actual foliage I put in the back, which is made out of real moss. So keeping that in mind, I would give this piece a five on 10. This next sculpture is Nier Giganti from Monster Hunter. The idea was that I wanted to recreate it and it looked like an absolutely amazing creature in the game, which, <clears throat> mm, uh, don't, don't judge me. I have not played it yet. Don't, I said don't judge me. Come in, Nasa. And I was so pleased with this sculpture. There were so many different gradients. I did a lot of dry brushing. Look at the different horns. You can see the different textures. And it was also one of the first times where I had to do body proportions. So I had to make sure the thighs and the calves worked well and then the biceps and the forearms. And so when I looked at it, I was like, not bad, Jackie. But of course, looking at it more closely, there are so many things wrong with this sculpture. Firstly, why the heck did I not finish painting the base? Why? Is it cracked? How did I not see that it was cracked? Or did I see it and ignore it? Most likely. <laughs> I have to admit though, listen to my excuse, because that's all it is and no one's gonna believe me. But I'm believing myself and that's how I go to bed at night. In addition to YouTube, I have a full-time teaching job. So sometimes putting 20 to 25 hours on a sculpture makes it so that I have no more weekends. So there are times, admittedly, I try to cheat and go faster or skip out on something. Editing. 
The other thing is, what's going on with that hand? What is it even doing? Is it washing a car? Is it telling someone to stop? Like, hey, can you please stop throwing arrows at me? I really don't appreciate it. And the other thing that's wrong with it is when we move it to the side, take a look at it, it looks like it's falling backwards. Like, <gasps> kind of like leaning. Does it make sense? Am I doing it right? I totally messed up because my wiring was off, the way I hammered it was wrong. So what ended up happening is after baking it, it was too late to move anything because if you move anything, it's gonna break. And I most definitely got lazy on the environment. I could have made some kind of grass, but no, instead I decided to just paint the base. Paint it poorly, if I might add. So overall, I think this sculpture deserves a 5 on 10 for effort. Let's continue with dragons. This one was kind of a way for me to playfully say that Jazza challenged me. So I wanted to make a stone dragon that is protecting some kind of secret. I love the light effect. That is probably the gimmicky part that makes me so in love with this piece. And I thought I was pretty clever adding those crystals to the back of the creature. Because it's supposed to be a rock type dragon, there were supposed to be some lumps and some bumps, which admittedly I think I did fairly well. But where I failed the most is actually giving this creature more texture. Why didn't I add little bumps by making balls of clay and then sticking it right on the outside? And the other thing that bothers me is the fact that if we look under the dragon itself, you can almost see parts of the wire armature that I used, which means I couldn't access those bits in order to smooth it in properly. Now the question is, could I not have probably tried to get into those accesses because some of them are really, really, really tight? Or was it just laziness? I have a feeling it's somewhere in between. Probably is like, man, this is gonna take me half an hour more to smooth it in. Eh, forget it. Just okay. It's under. No one's gonna see it. So I think partially knowing that no one's going to see the under part except for me is probably a good reason why I got lazy on the bottom. But other than that, I do have to say the wings look extremely stiff. They're way too close to the body. They could have been spread out a little more. But other than that, I really don't dislike this piece as much as I might sound like I do. So I would most likely rank it a seven and a half on 10. By the way, I would really appreciate if you grains wrote your score next to each sculpture I've made. I'm trying to be less mean, but then again, that's not good enough because we in the Salt Shaker family are each a grain of salt in which it's important for us to spread the salt. Where do I even start with this sculpture? I, again, when you're making something and you're so involved with it, you look at it and you're like, this is a part of me. I love it to the end of days. And then a few months later, you're like, wow, was it? What was, so, like, what, what, what was going on? I feel like there are two parts to this story. If you look at the bottom part, including a part of the water, not all of it, but part of the water, at least the part I paid attention to, with the rocks and the waterfall and the relics and the robot, I love those spots. Then we start moving into that little fish bowl that I used, the one with Totoro on the inside. Yeah, what happened to Totoro? What did Totoro see while fishing that makes him look so traumatized? traumatized. I know one of the reasons that I probably, again, tried to rush the inside of this is because when I was using resin, I needed to wait about 12 hours, which means 12 hours of my time sculpting this was waiting, which means I had a lot less time needing to focus on the actual sculptures. M my time was cut short. You have to hear me make excuses. <laughs> it's not just Totoro the problem on the inside of the bowl. What happened to those mushrooms, I do not know. They don't even look like mushrooms anymore. They look like candles. The inside of this, if I could separate the bowl from the piece, I feel like they would get along much better. So because of that, it, I would have to give this piece probably a three on 10. The whole point of having the bowl is to have the emphasis on the whole thing not just one side, but I really ruined the inside of that environment. So that's entirely on me. It, it could have been way better. If you didn't watch the anime Ancient Magus Bride, I recommend it. 100%. It is one of my top fives anime, again, of all time. So for this piece, it is a monster and it is a creature and it has like this flowiness to it. And I wanted to recreate a moment of sadness in this creature's life. It's not a spoiler, by the way. And I would have to say it's probably one of my favorite sculptures of all time, even looking back at it now, because I feel like the slouchiness and the movement and the hand on the floor and the other hand reaching for the wand really does give that impression of melancholy. Very sad. I was also really happy at the fact that I thought of making the wand out of toothpick. 
and then breaking it. It really does look like a piece of wood. Where I probably feel the least proud of is the base. As you can see, part of the brown is just incomplete. I didn't do the finishing justice. In the grass, in many of the parts, was also not painted enough, even though I thought it was painted enough. I should have looked a little more closely. I feel like my biggest problem for this is the finishing touches. But the sculpture itself, having the cow type head, made me so happy. I mean, just look at the cow type head. I had never done anything like that before I sculpted this piece. And I believe the head alone I spent about maybe two hours on. I don't remember, but I know it was quite a long time. So because because I am emotionally biased towards this piece, I would give it an 8 on 10. This sculpture gives me a lot of mixed feelings because it is a sculpture makeover, a completely revamping and adding of my own personality to a sculpture I found at a thrift store. So all the different little cracks and bumps, I really wanted to keep it at its essence because it's a sculpture made out of wood. Here's what it looked like before, just so you have an idea. And I definitely think it is completely night and day. In the video, I did mention I wanted to keep it still feeling like it's from down south. Like it could have been a souvenir in a fantasy world south somewhere near the beach. And I think I kept that kind of look. My biggest downfall, which I have to admit is still a problem today, is when it comes to my paint job. I am terrible at making gradients. I am terrible at color transitioning. When you look at the back of the sculpture, it's really extremely choppy. The colors don't blend into each other. I have no idea personally how to do that. I should probably ask Skillshare to sponsor me because I need to learn to do better gradients. But you can see I did try to put more effort. I added those little bumps to look like scales. And the overall transformation of this creature makes me so happy. And that's why I'm going to divide the grade into two different components. The first one is transformation idea and the second one will be on the paint job itself. So for the transformation idea, again, I am biased. I'm going to give this a nine and a half. I think the execution's pretty cool. The wings spreading out is really neat. Giving it feet where it didn't have feet before. Horns, glass eye, the jaw, and the beak, and the teeth sticking out. I'm really happy with that. But when it comes to the paint job, it's terrible. I would give it a two on 10 when it comes to the paint job. Even if there's a workshop that someone wants to teach me how to do a paint job and I could repaint this little fella, it would make me so happy. One of my biggest recent regrets is this sculpture here. And although I love the idea, I am absolutely in love with the legs because they really do look like frog legs. And for those of you who don't know, all the videos I mentioned of all the sculptures I did in this video will be in the description box below. I find that this sculpture particularly is missing so much detail. I could have made more texture. I could have added more of that giraffe pattern. The feathers that I added in my head, they looked so differently. But then when I put them on the actual sculpture, it just looks like a chick a baby chicken going into its puberty phase. I thought I liked it. I was like, yeah, it's not bad. I did some dry brushing, which I was really happy with. But overall, the body looks plain. It's just missing so much more. I feel like having maybe wings or having arms or adding a little bit more of the pattern, adding a little more texture. There was just so much that I could have done. But knowing that the actual description of the creature was that its body is blue and the only thing that was a darker blue was the giraffe pattern and, and, and the feathers. I just really overall hate this piece right now, but I love the legs. So I would give it a one on 10. That's how much I hate it. I would give it away in a blink of an eye, but please don't ask me to give it away because I don't want to pay shipping. <laughs> Dragon Bard is also one of the most recent thrift store makeovers that I've made. And just so you have an idea, here's what it looked like before. And in this sculpture itself, I am really happy with the transformation. It went from a really ugly, dopey bunny that looks like it was on some interesting things. This really pensive dragon thinking of the next song it's going to play while looking at the stars. And definitely the paint job on this one is by far probably the best I've done. And the dry brushing on the actual horns is really cool. I love the purple and the green contrasting with each other. And the addition of the cloth at the tail where it looks like the tail is ripping out and adding those little spikes. And again, we had dry brushing on top. I love it. I, I love the fact that I also added little freckles here and there, darker brown. So this piece I'm kind of tooting my own horn because I love it 
so much. My two biggest pieces of regret is the fact that the eye shines a little too much. So I probably could have gotten away without putting any kind of glare on the black part. And the next regret, which is something I was thankfully able to fix, is that when I did it the first time, I glazed it with resin and it was way too shiny. So what I ended up doing was taking some Mod Podge matte and putting a coat of that right on top. For me, I would have to give it a nine and a half. It's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna stick to saying that as my most recent transformation, I don't hate it. There is a little blemish on the top of the snout, which I'm not quite sure where it comes from. Maybe it was the resin and I didn't see it because it was too glossy. This week's shoutouts go to Nicole Olazaba, Katie Zeng, Alex Wolgamuth, Pickle Trigger, that is a really cute nerdy doll, Road Breach, love the salty face, Wolfina Foxtail, Marshmallow and Coco, you're doing it right. And my world of madness, you look adorable in that merch. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Anjali177 here on YouTube for making this absolutely adorable animation of the saltiest verb, Angel. Remember, if you want a shout out in my normally Friday videos, don't forget to hashtag Notification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release or hashtag NerdyCrafter on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch a video that YouTube thinks is perfect for you, make sure you check it down here. And if you want to watch a crafty video, make sure you check it up here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.